Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the matchless name of your Lord, our Lord and our Savior, we humble ourselves tonight, Father God, to give you praise and thanks for what you continue to do in our lives. Father, we thank you that we're still able to praise you, Father God, to lift up your holy name. And Father God, we thank you that we're able, Father God, to pray together collectively to lift up your mighty name, to thank you for all that you continue to do. And Father God, we ask you to cancel every thought that the enemy has placed in our mind. We come against all sickness and death and hurt, harm and danger, Father God. We ask you to cover us under your mighty hand. We ask that you would bless us tonight, Lord, that you would keep us, Father God, in your precious, in your precious hands. We thank you for our family. Thank you for our jobs. We thank you for our homes. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to even purchase gas today, Lord. We thank you that you have met all of our needs, Father. And we just celebrate, Father, that we covered under your blood. We thank you for tonight's lesson. We ask you to bless it. We ask you to unlock the ears of your people, that they would hear something, Father God, that would help direct them, hallelujah, to where you would have to, them to go, to serve you in spirit and in truth. We humble ourselves and we thank you, Father God, that this is the day that you have made, Father God, and we come to rejoice and be glad in it. You've kept us throughout this day. You've allowed no hurt, harm, or danger to come nigh our dwelling. We thank you that our storehouses are full. We thank you that we are blessed to be a blessing. We celebrate you, we honor you, and we praise you. And it's in your matchless name that we believe and receive. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Tonight I want to talk about standing tall. Standing tall. It is a blessing, amen, to finally be back here on Wednesday night to celebrate with you and to share a word from the Lord tonight. Amen. We had a wonderful weekend that we spent with our children. Amen. The, the Lord blessed us to, to go there and, and return safely. And I pray that each and every one of you had a magnificent Juneteenth, that the Lord blessed you as well. I want to draw your attention to Ephesians chapter number 6. And I want to share verse number 14, just the first part of that verse. It says, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. Let me say that again. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. I've read uh, Ephesians chapter 6. In verse 14, part A of that verse. Standing tall. You know, life is, is what we make of it. At least that's what some people say today. But those of us who want to live to our fullest, our fullest potential, we know that, that we need more than a slogan, as the saying goes, to make it. We've got to be able to recognize and avoid pitfalls that, worldliness, that, that the worldliness dangles in front of us. We've got to have a, 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 a godly plan to follow, and then we've got to work that plan that the Lord has placed before us. So, so for those that may feel a little bit behind on their achievement, or for those who are just starting out, or may feel that they need some tips tonight to help get them on the right track, here's what I want you to know tonight. First of all, that you can make it in spite of what we're dealing with, in spite of what we're going through, amen, financially, economically, gas prices, all of that stuff, the Lord still is in control. So the first thing I want to talk about is we have to know our, our Achilles heel. Remember, Achilles, he was a Greek hero of the Trojan War and the greatest warrior of, 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 of that time. So according to legend, Achilles wore body armor that made him invulnerable, uh, invulnerable to attacks. But legend also says that the Achilles that he had, that he died from an arrow wound in the most unlikely place, and the only place uncovered in battle. It was his heel. Now, for those who think a wound 
to the hill can't can take a person down. Ask a diabetic. Feet are sensitive. They're a sensitive part of the body and a breeding ground for infection. Poor Achilles probably succumbed to such an infection after taking that arrow in his heel. And because his death came from such a small wound, Achilles' heel has, be, has come to means a person's point of weakness. So all of us, we have some of those. Your Achilles' heel is, is any weakness that distracts you from reaching your ultimate goal in Christ. The Apostle Paul, he calls them by another name. He calls them the works of the flesh, and he runs them down for us in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 19. He lists adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, and reveling. So if you can find yourself anywhere in this mix, you've got some work to do. You've got, you've, you've got to find out what makes you lose your way. And you've got to ask the Lord to empower you to find your way back to him. And all of us have what they call that come to Jesus moment. When we know we've strayed away and we've got to look to him and ask him to help us realign our thoughts and our, our, our actions. See, these works of the flesh, they cause spiritual infections that can bring us down and make us crawl in weaknesses and su submission to Satan. They show up at the most unlikely times and in the most unlikely places. I've seen them show up at family gatherings, you know, like family reunions, office parties, marriages, and even in church meetings. You see, the flesh does not discriminate church. It can cause us to quarrel or become selfish and demanding. It can stir up jealousy and contentions among even the closest friends and and family members. Satan doesn't care who, it, who he infects. So as long as he destroys our peace of mind and distracts us from our walk with Christ. So the only way to stand up tall and reach the stature of the fullness of Christ, like Ephesians 4 and 13 says, is to avoid those devilish sins of the flesh. So you've got to know your Achilles heel and ask the Lord for power to remove it. Then know your adversary. We got to know who we're dealing with. Satan doesn't play church. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, he says, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walketh about sinking seeking whom he may devour. Again, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He's, he, he's, he's tough. It's tough to spot him because he transforms himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. See, sometimes you may think it's light. You might think it's God, but it's actually satanic. If he, if he, did, if he, if he did appear vis visibly, he would probably invite him, if he didn't, you'd probably invite him right into the house because he's a master of disguise. Trust me, he won't show up in a red suit and horns. Amen. Still, his name gives him away. The name Satan, it means adversary, one who fights against God and man. You can find that in Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1, again in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. In Revelation chapter chapter nine, I'm sorry, chapter twelve and verse nine, he's called the great dragon. In 2 Corinthians chapter four and verse four, he's called the God of this age. John calls him a murderer and a liar in John chapter eight and verse number forty-four. Ephesians chapter two and verse two calls him the prince of the power of the air. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9 calls him the old serpent. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 5 calls him the tempter. And our Lord and Savior calls him the wicked one in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 19. So
So as you can see, Satan specializes in division and subtraction. Not the kind that we learn in elementary school. There's nothing elementary about how Satan operates. He has a special he has special formulas and tactics. He divides by instilling doubt and suspicion. He's dubious. His dubious methods are shady and they're fishy. He's a cunning adversary who knows what it takes to destroy our hopes, our happiness, and our need for God. We're, we're no match for him as he amasses as he amasses eternal knowledge. So he knows a lot from down through the generation, much more than we know. But we can learn to recognize Satan through some of his tactics. Let's talk about those for a moment. First of all, his first tactic, I believe, is deception. He wants to deceive us. Satan, he wells this tool with devastating results. He'll make you think that you're on the right path when you're ready, really headed down the road of destruction. That's what he does. That's why so many people leave church. He has people thinking that uh, uh, the, the church is really not where we should be. He has people thinking that there are certain things that we don't have to do, even though they're in the Bible. He deceives us. That's his job. Then he uses what I, I call doubt. He, 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 he calls us to doubt the word of God. And see, with this tactic, Satan makes you question God's word and his goodness. Next, Satan uses discouragement. How many of y'all felt discouraged just this past month when you went to the gas pump? You're like, good Lord, is it going to stop going up? He'll make you focus on your problems rather than Yahweh. And that's what he wants to do. See, your problems will make you doubt that God is good. Another tactic that he uses is diversions. Satan makes evil things seem more attractive than good things. He'll dangle them in your face. He'll disguise them as the precious things of the world. And he'll make you think you have to have certain things that are actually destroying you spiritually. Another tactic he uses... Uh, uh, defeat. He uses defeat. He'll make you feel like a failure. Or, or at the very least, he'll give you a, a defeatist attitude. There's a lot of people, when they wake up in the morning, they're already defeated because they say, I shouldn't even get out of bed. I, sh I have nothing to live for. That is a defeatist attitude. I'll never be able to do that. That's what you think in your mind. I can never win. I don't even, I won't ever get a promotion. I'll never be happy. I'll never find that person that God wants me to be with. But how many of y'all know that there is no failure in God? And finally, church, when all else fails, Satan uses his last tactic, delay. Some of us, we've been waiting on Yahweh to do some things in our lives for many years. And because we've been waiting for so long, we've given up on it. We don't think it's ever going to take place. He makes you put off something so, so it will never happen. So you got to keep things in the forefront of your, your mind. He'll convince you that you'll never kick that habit. You'll never overcome your low self-esteem. You'll never have courage to accept Christ as your Savior. And so if you're going to stand tall and not crawl tonight, you have to know your adversary. All of those six things that I just named, you've got to know those things. you got to recognize them, and then you've got to put the word of God on them. And finally, church, you have to know your arsenal. All of us have an arsenal that we can tap into to fight this enemy. You have weapons to use against your adversary. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through, 3 through 5, it explains that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it in, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now notice what he said. He said you got to cast down those things. You got to basically put those things under your feet. What does that mean to cast it down? 
It means that when Satan attacks our flesh, we don't have to fight in the flesh. We have another means of attack, and his name is Yeshua. His name is Jesus. Satan is no match for our Savior. Satan may use his imaginations and high things to imprison us and exalt himself, but Jesus, oh my goodness, don't you love the sound of his name, Yeshua? Jesus can set our flesh free from Satan's evil captivity and make us his obedient disciples. That's what I'm striving to be every day, oh, an obedient disciple. And you might be thinking tonight, I've been messed up for a long time, preacher. Mm, mm, mm. It's going to take more than a, a Bible verse to straighten out my life. But I say to you tonight, don't ever underestimate the power of the word of God. He set our salvation in motion when he sacrificed his son on the cross at Calvary. He filled that arsenal with everything that we would need to fight off Satan. And he left the key to this arsenal in his son's hand. If we want access to that arsenal of, 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 that arsenal of power, all God requires of us is to confess with our mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead because you already been baptized. You already been filled with the Holy Ghost. And the scripture says, thou shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 and verse number nine. You've got the key to unlock the door to your arsenal. It's in your hand. It's in your mouth. Amen. It's in your heart. All you have to do is turn the key with your heart. Once you do it, you're in Christ, and Christ is in you. And no power on earth will ever be able to deceive or defeat you if you stay in Christ. Know your Achilles heel and confess that thing with your mouth. Know your adversary and confess his, his hold on your life. You've got to tell him that you no longer hold me because I'm turning all this over to God, my Savior then you've got to know your arsenal, Jesus Christ. Ask him to fight your battle for you. Sin will no longer blind your eyes. Sin will no longer limit your abilities. Sin will no longer callous your soul. Sin will no longer shackle our feet. Sin will no longer rob our victory. Sin will no longer hinder our prayers. Sin will no longer defile our hands pollute our desires, defeat our efforts, deceive our minds, paralyze our or steal our joy, or mold our habits, control our appetites, corrupt our hearts. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to his riches of his grace. Your noble effort, efforts are no match for Satan. Your high standards are no match for Satan. But Jesus, your, your arsenal against your adversary. If you make him your savior, you won't have to crawl anymore. You can stand tall and let the enemy know, I am blessed and victorious in Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for this word. We thank you for encouraging our spirits, our souls. We thank you for blessing us and being a mind regulator through your word. Touch us right now, Father God, where we failed to tap into our arsenal. Encourage us, Lord. Hallelujah. When we wake up in the morning, give us a spirit of joy and shout that we can shout, hallelujah, that you're good and you're worthy of all the praise. Bless the ears that heard the word, but most importantly, give us the power and the anointing to use this lesson to overcome our enemy. We stand tonight, Father, knowing that you have the ability to meet all of our needs. And Lord, if we serve you with goodness and gladness and joy, you will even allow us to enjoy some of our wants. We thank you tonight. We bless you. We love you. Father, touch each and every family that's on this call tonight. Bring unity in their homes. Father God, allow them to join together, to walk in the same direction, Father God, that 
they will know that there's power in unity, there's strength in unity. We come against division. We claim, hallelujah, togetherness tonight in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Yeshua the Christ. Bless us, Lord, to be able to walk together. And Lord, we lift up Brother Minus. He's on my heart. Touch his body. We come against sickness. We come against cancer. We come against, hallelujah, those things that are trying to destroy us and take us out of here before we finish what you've mandated for us to do. I speak healing over these people under the sound of my voice, your people, and Father God, Father God, those that are attached to your kingdom, ask you, Father, to give them clarity tonight so they will be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, we bless you, we love you, we give you all the glory. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight from the Rock of Tampa Bay. Hallelujah. 3838 West Humphrey Street. Amen. You can find us on Giveify, the Rock of Tampa Bay. Amen. If you desire to send something to our ministry to be a blessing, we touch and agree with you that whatever you sow into this ministry, our Lord and Savior will give you a hundredfold return. We thank each and every one of you tonight. And pray that you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.